My name is Christina. And I'm John. And this is our tiny house. Come on inside. So welcome to our tiny house. This is our living room. Uh, we have a couch from Ikea that pulls out into a full-size bed. And then this area over here is storage. And then we have these two shelves on the wall. So we have a bunch of pictures of things, places we've been and pictures of us. Um, and then we have this table here that folds out to like make a bigger table for dinner and coffee or whatever. Um, we have Sammy's little bed over here. We have a TV stand from Wayfair that has all of our movies. I've gotten really into plants recently, so here are my plants. We wanted a big TV, so we have a 50 inch TV. Um, we have our Wi-Fi router over here, blackout curtains for this window. I have an Xbox, so we have a mount to go on the wall for that. And a little storage area over here. This is our office. This is pretty much where I live. Um, this is where I do all my studying and I'm a PC gamer. So this is where I game and where I eat. She's, we got a seat for me and a seat for her. Um, a pretty good view of the outside, which keeps things relaxed when I'm studying all day. Uh, yeah, so I built these uh, open shelvings that we got the wood and the uh, supports from, from Lowe's. And it, it holds things, pretty much everything, from my books to our coffee stuff and our printer and all of her plants, of course. All right, so this is our kitchen. This was probably my favorite part of the build and the planning process. So Ikea has a tool online where you can build the kitchen online. So the wheel wells for the trailer is actually from like this point all the way to the washer dryer on both sides. So we had to get drawers that actually fit like those areas. So Ikea has drawers that come out exactly like 13 inches, which is exactly the amount uh, back to the wheel wells, which is very important. Um, we got these butcher block countertops from Home Depot that we really like and we have an extra part for the stove top to use for like cutting board or extra space. We have a magnetic knife rack that's really good for all the knives, utensil holder, we have our espresso machine, um, some more plants and these are really cool. They're magnetic spice racks. Since our walls are metal everything's magnetic. So our stove top is a gas propane stove top that has four burners and we really like to cook so we really wanted more burners than just like two and then we actually have an oven right here and in the planning and then buying the whole kitchen we forgot that a convection oven you're not supposed to put in an enclosed space like this so we had to make a drawer so when we use it we pull it out like this and then use it and it fits pretty much whatever we need and here we have Tubwares and pots and pans. This is all of our like pots and pans. It all fits all perfect. Everything's pretty much like collapsible or stackable. Um, this is just a few like extra things. And then IKEA has these like hidden drawers. So that's all of our silverware. We really wanted a farmhouse sink, and I really wanted a window right in front of the sink. So if we ever wash dishes, we can look outside and distract from washing dishes. So we have plenty space to cook and meal prep and all that. We have these little magnetic hooks for our little espresso mugs and our storage for cups and we really wanted open shelving for the kitchen. So we have our bowls and plates. A lot of people ask how we reach this. I'm pretty tall so I can reach those fine. Um, and then we have extra storage over here, coffee mugs. We have these baskets here that we normally put like fruit and coffee that kind of thing in our cutting board. And this is our drying rack. So if we ever wash dishes, we can just pull this out and it folds up. And then we have a like drying mat that goes under that. And then we have a normal size refrigerator. We wanted, we really like foods. So we have a fridge up here and a freezer and it's like normal size. And this was pretty much where the door ended and then the wheel well ended. So that was like the perfect place for a refrigerator. All right, so on the other side of the kitchen, we have uh, these stairs here that I built in order for us to get to our bedroom loft. Um, it's all out of plywood. 
And down here we have our uh, shoe storage, which is just a few shelves that I put in. And uh, this is pretty much our closet too. We have all of our clothes in here for the most part, pants and, and uh, shirts and whatnot. Uh, and back here we have our area for our pets where we have our little bird uh, Peter who's a Quaker parrot. He, he's quiet most of the time, but sometimes he's a little loud. And then down here from Wayfair we got this little dog cage, but unfortunately Sammy absolutely hates it. So it's kind of a, a makeshift storage area. Right now it's full of tools and other supplies. In the back of the kitchen we built this little area for our washer dryer. We just have some simple cabinets up here that I, that I built and this is all out of plywood too. And like, like most people, we have a, a combination washer dryer, which saves a lot of space. And it, it's pretty nice. The only thing, it, it takes a long time to dry compared to a normal washer dryer since it's ventless. Um, and then down here, we have some more storage for uh, flowers and sugars and a few other little random uh, things that we don't use too often. So then uh, I built this sliding door too, this little barn door, right? It's called a barn door? Yeah. yeah this little barn door. I just built it all at a, at a pine, and it, it may not be the prettiest door, but, it, but it's our door. <laughs> so we wanted to build a tiny house ourselves just to save money and really make it what we wanted to make it. And we planned, a lot of the planning was done while we were building. Like these walls were actually built and then we were planning the inside while we were building. Um, it took like seven to nine months to build and we were in here already. There was a few things to do, but it was pretty much done by the time we moved in. The, the number one reason mostly was just to save money because rent here in Orlando is really expensive. It's like $1,200 a month. And uh, with her moving down from North Carolina to, to live with me, we'd, we would be renting somewhere since at the time I was just living with my family. and. We just didn't want to spend that much on rent and figured we'd, we'd save a lot more money building a tiny house in the long run, especially one that we'd, we'd be keeping for essentially forever. So I work a normal Monday through Friday, nine to five job. Um, this is really helping us to save a lot of money. I have some student loans we're trying to pay off. Uh, the only bad thing about tiny house or tiny living is it's really hard to find parking. So we're really lucky to be living on his parents' property right now, but there's also a lot of our RV parks and tiny home communities that are like coming out recently so that's always like a big option for when we do move. All right, so this is our bathroom. We wanted a bigger bathroom compared to a tiny home because you know you spend a lot of time in here getting ready in the morning, taking a shower, taking a bath. Um, one important thing was a bathtub for me because I only had a shower in my old house. So we have a full-size bathtub. We have a uh, vanity from Ikea that has two big drawers. This is also from Ikea. It has like a lot of storage for makeup and just other things. And we have a fan in here, which is important for a tiny house because you don't want moisture or anything. And we actually have like a full-size closet for a tiny home. So we have all of John's like nice clothes and then my like winter, so all of our like winter, summer clothes are in here. And then we have some, like purses and our mop is in the corner, just like extra storage. And we have a compost toilet and we didn't want to worry about plumbing here. And our fan is actually on a timer, which helps a lot. Um, we have some hooks here for like hats. And then our electrical panel is actually behind this picture, which is really nice. So this is our bedroom. As you can see, we have a lot of room. I'm sitting on the bed. Uh, we have a purple mattress, which I think is like nine, 10 inches. Under the mattress, we have something called an underlay, which keeps the mattress from getting too much moisture underneath it, which is important. Um, over here, we have a kid's dresser from Target, which holds our pajamas, underwear, socks. We have these blackout uh, blinds from Ikea that when we sleep we just like pull down at night and it keeps the light out like a lot. John sleeps in every day until like 11, 12 sometimes so it's really important to stay dark up here. Uh, the ceiling is actually slanted 
six inches. So over here is six inches above the side. But even over here, you have like plenty of room. Um, we got little nightstands on each side and little lights on the back. And then we did shiplap back here. here. Here in the living room, we have this ladder to access this craft and storage loft that I built out of pine. So it's pretty light to lift. I thought about putting wheels on it, but that, that any, any wheel kit you could buy for a ladder was really expensive. And even buying a used sort of library ladder that slides on wheels is also really expensive. So we pretty much just built this where we have these little openings to slide this metal pipe that we got from Lowe's and painted black. And we just put some of that, um, like furniture felt there was super glue in order for it to slide easy and also for, so it doesn't scratch the, the pipe at all. So then to take it out, all you do is you just kind of push it forward a little bit and slide this area out. Lift it to the next notch. And that's it. All right, so this is our craft slash like reading loft. Um, this was also important to me because I really like books. So we have these two bookshelves back here with all of our books. John has all of his like school books over here. Also I really like crafts, so there's a lot of crafts up here. We have a foldable table over here and some more storage in here along with more plants. We have this little table here with plants. Um, I really like this beanbag chair. It's really comfy for if you just want to sit up here and read a book. Um, before we moved this, we actually had a twin bed up here. So it's possible to put a twin size mattress up here if you wanted to sleep or if you want to have extra people here. Um, but it just doubles as lots of storage and I really like having books. So if I want to take one and read one or if I want to paint or draw or anything like that, I really like scrapbooking. So I have a bunch of stuff like that. Probably a little more than most tiny home people, but it works for us. So we were actually dating for three three years and we were long distance and then I knew that we would that we were ready to move in somewhere and I really liked the idea of tiny houses. I watched a lot of YouTube tours and I was really already like planning everything and then everyone was kinda like, Oh, that's like a big thing to do, that's a lot to build and like it was kinda shot down for a little bit and then it was brought up again and everybody was like, Oh, that's a great idea So then it just kinda happened and I had a 1,400 square foot house in North Carolina that was an old fixer-upper and sold everything, sold the house, moved down here and that's what was used to pay for this house to build and this is almost 400 square feet so big difference in living space. Uh, I really, the big house I had it was just me so I had two bedrooms um, like a really big closet and like I didn't use half the things I had. I had a lot of clothes I didn't use. I was like in the kitchen in my room and like there was so much space that I just didn't use. So the tiny house we actually use pretty much every space in here. Everything was built around what we need. Um, yeah, the, the transition for me was, was pretty easy since I was already like a homebody or just lived at my my desk essentially at home too. Just studying and playing video games and Skyping her while we were long distance. So moving to a little tiny house wasn't, I honestly didn't really notice much. It was all the same to me, especially one of this size. <laughs> yeah. When we first built the tiny house, we, we didn't have this deck yet. It took us a while to get around to doing this. We originally just had a little uh, milk crate actually we would step on to get in the tiny house. So it's really nice having this now. And then we also have like a little garden around it. We have our oregano and mint here. The, the pepper plants aren't looking too good since we had a, a frost recently that we weren't able to catch early enough to cover the plants. And of course the little cactuses we keep outside. So then the, the whole house we built out of SIPs, which is called uh, structural insulated paneling, which is the same stuff they build uh, industrial refrigerators out of which is uh, this it's a uh, three inches thick it's also really light so it's nice for the the total weight of the house and uh, it's got a really good um, insulation value it's like R21 for three inches of this and you can see how th uh, thin the metal is so it's not too great for holding up heavy things on the wall but it's strong enough to attach most things so we have our, our 
living room window here brings in a lot of natural light since the the sun rises over there in the in the east uh, we originally thought about getting a, a gooseneck trailer like a lot especially for a house this size and, and it, it's a uh, weight but we found that uh, this was a better option since you don't need a special truck to pull a normal uh, hitch trailer like this rather than getting a whole truck for a, a gooseneck and then Back over here, we have our little storage shed that we keep our random outdoor equipment and, and uh, bird feed and, and other things. It's just a plain old Rubbermaid shed we got from, from Home Depot. It, it's pretty cheap, I think it's like $100, which is a pretty good price for a shed this size. Uh, so here we have our homemade gray water tank, which is one of those 55 gallon drums that they ship uh, like chemicals and stuff in. We found a guy locally who actually um, cleans them and sells them like recycle. And we just d dug like a, a seven foot deep ditch and put it in there and surrounded it in a gravel and, and other stones and have a gray water leading into it. It, it works pretty good for 55 gallons between the, the sink and the washer machine and the, and the shower. Like it, we haven't had any problems with it at all. The sections of our wall extend to this length and they slide together. So you buy it in like four foot widths and you choose the height you want. And one side we have it like three and a half feet and the other side is like 14 feet to give a slight slant in the roof for the rain and everything to run off. So when you buy them, yeah, you get them in four feet sections and they, they have a tongue and groove where they slide together. And then we just like uh, screwed them down here to attach them and put this skirt on the outside to keep all the rain from getting in there. Yeah, so since we chose the SIPs, the, the walls and the roof were all done in two days just because it was so simple. And that saves you from the floor planning too of planning out where you're gonna have all the wires run through and where you're gonna have windows because you, you cut out the windows and everything like that after the fact. So it saves you some uh, floor planning where you can just kind of do it as you go. So here's our two propane tanks we have for our, our uh, tankless water heater, which is which works really well. And it, it's more efficient than having a tanked water heater since it only runs when you need it. So it's not always heating water, keeping it warm in a, in a tanked water heater. On all of our windows, we chose to use these, uh, this PVC invitation wood because we also wanted to build this house to last essentially forever since we, after we were done living in it, we planned on Airbnb being it out or just keeping it as a vacation home somewhere, like in the mountains of North Carolina or something. So we use this PVC uh, imitation wood, so we have to worry about that rotting or anything of like that. Uh. We have no like time limit to when we're gonna be here. We've been here for two years and honestly, I don't know, like a big house just seems kind of weird for me right now so i wouldn't i would also think about possibly building like a tiny home own foundation that's still under like a thousand feet just for one day when we have kids that would be really good but you can also have kids in tiny homes i've seen that happen um but i would all i would always want to like keep this place since we built it and we could use it for like an airbnb or have it on our own property or have it as like a vacation home something like that yeah, I've always said we'd be in it for like five years or so, but so, so far we're almost on two years and it seems like we might be in here for five years. We do have an Instagram page. It's tiny underscore house underscore journey. So if you want to follow us and ask any questions or comments or anything, you can find us there. Um, but I think that's it. So thanks for coming to our tiny house. Mm -hmm.